This week we are in the very lovely Perth, Australia. I'm very excited to be here. I'm joined by my new friend, Garrett Bird. Nailed it. Nailed it. Didn't screw it up twice in a row. Just got it. <laughs> Anyhow, we are at Comic Zone, a comic shop in the heart of the city. Um, and I've said many, many, many times in the past that one of my favorite things to do while traveling the world is examining nerd culture. And your shop seems to be the perfect spot for me to explore and maybe get a little insight from you. It's a beautiful shop. Thanks, man. We appreciate yeah. that. Thanks for having me here today. So you told me it was you and a co-owner. Yes, uh, myself and my uh, business partner, Mike. Uh, we have co-owners here. We've been open for just under 10 years at this spot. Um, yeah, we kind of consider ourselves the epicenter of comic culture in Perth. That yeah. thing, you know, serving every bit of me that you can provide. How long have you known him? Because you, you've been open um, for 10 years. How did it come to be that the two of you decided to open a comic shop? Um, probably about 10 years, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, he actually opened it a year before I got involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work at the Borders Bookshop when that was open back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a customer, and then one thing led to another. I started working here. Well, I became an owner as well, and here we are, yep. all these years later. <laughs> That's great. Ridiculous. Previous shop that you worked at, uh, what was that like kind of compared to this? Did you bring over some influences, or did um, you kind of try and branch off and go a different direction? Because well, I've been I've been collecting since I was like sort of three. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in the UK, my dad was a big X-Men fan before I was born, so I kind of, you know, was grandfathered in that way as being a big collector anyway, so like, you know, I've been reading for years, you know, comics, books, movies, and all, all sorts of nerd culture, I've kind of been raised in that environment anyway. Yes. Um, I know, right? It's the way to do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so my I, life around. Yeah, exactly, the way it should be done. Really. Um, so I kind of brought that knowledge automatically from my background, my family, all massive nerds, all big sci-fi fans and stuff as well, so it's like, yeah, I was kind of doomed from the start, really. It sounds like I want to be a part of your family. Well, it sounds board. like. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yes. You were telling me a little bit about the flow of your shop and how you wanted to establish it to really be approachable. Yeah. Do you want to discuss that a little yeah, bit? Totally. With um, one thing we kind of pride ourselves on is um, there's that kind of stereotype when you come to a comic shop, there's like the downstairs dungeon basement kind of like a Big Bang Theory kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. kind of assume every shop is like that. Dark and dingy. Yeah, yeah, we kind of, we kind of want to go away from that a little bit. So like, you can see it's really brightly lit. So you walk in here, there's lots of room to browse around and walk. It's not like the bottom of an hourglass and everyone's back to back trying to yeah. actually like past each other. Clutter is a big thing that I that's see in comic shops. Like and they really want to avoid Clutter free here, it's that's, beautiful. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah a, big, a big thing for us was like, being welcoming to new people mm -hmm. as well, because comics can be kind of intimidating. Yes. Readers, so it's like they want to make sure people feel comfortable when they come in, they yeah. can wander around, not be too overwhelmed by what they see, but also comfortable that if they want to talk to somebody, they can come up and ask questions, but if they know you, they can you know, just walk around and browse mm -hmm. their own ladies, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up Intimidating, it's literally uh, written on my notes, nice. and I want to talk about it, let's jump ahead to Rock that. Right <laughs> I've only been reading comics for four years. Yeah. Because the biggest thing for me is that it felt very intimidating. Mm -hmm. There's so much content, yeah. and it's a very opinionated culture as well. There's definitely that, yeah. Uh, so it's hard to approach and, and get into for the very first time. If you were to say, here are three to five comics that are must read to give you a start into the industry, what would you recommend? It, it's very open-ended, yeah. it depends what kind of characters you're into, right, right, like there's a lot of people who don't know Marvel from DC, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know like that there's not Marvel and DC uh, in comics, yeah, that yeah. people go, well there's non-superhero comics, what the mm -hmm. heck? Um, so for me it just depends what people are looking for, like if you're looking for a Batman comic, mm -hmm. my recommendation is usually Batman Year One, the Frank Miller story, mm -hmm. just because it's a good intro story, it's a good intro point, like if you've never read a comic before or you don't know anything about Batman's history, mm -hmm. you can kind of jump straight in with that. If you're an X-Men fan, there's a series called Endangered yeah. Species and it kind of shows you them being like the feared and hated mutants against the mutant humans, that kind of thing, so yeah. it gives you like a good background on that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So really it just depends what kind of characters and stories you're into, like if you're into a, a generic superhero story, there's something for you if you want something a bit dark, weird, messed up, like we were talking about um, the Lock and Key series, yeah, written yeah. by um, Stephen King's son. Yeah. So it's got that suburban horror, it's really mm -hmm. kind of vibe. If you like Stranger Things, it's a really good, similar story for that kind of thing. And it's a self contained six volume mm -hmm. story as well, so you don't have to read like thousands of crossovers and that kind of thing. You've got options. Like that's one thing, that's one thing I love about comics is it doesn't matter what your taste or your background, there is something out there for everybody. Like look just look at the Star Wars comics yeah. now. How many things are coming out from that? Yeah. Plenty of options. So when people come in for the first time and look for something new, do you try and take their interests that have people typically seen a lot of the films and then you try and direct them in that? Yeah, there's that a lot area? there's definitely a lot of people who come from the TV or the film background mm -hmm. side of things and you know that. It's a perfect gateway drug. You know, it's nice that, that it all kind of feeds back yeah, into its original. This is it, yeah, the books 
provide the background for the mm -hmm. book, for the movies and the TV shows, the TV shows provide the content for the books. It's, you know, this cool feedback loop yeah. sort of thing going That's on awesome. with it. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people just kind of find they like certain characters, they hear about them or they can replay like the Injustice games mm -hmm. that have been coming out recently. Right, yeah. Just came out. That's it, people, yeah, people have gone yeah. nuts for those and gone, oh, where did this story come from? Luckily there's an Injustice yeah. comic book yeah, that yeah. ties in with it, tells you all the background of it, so people can kind of go, you know, it just, it just depends what's bringing you to the table, really. You're nominated for 2016's Will Eisner Spirit of Comics Retailer Award. That's right. Did I get all of the words right? Pretty much spot That's on. a yeah, lengthy yeah. title. Um, you did better with that than my name as well. Jeez, yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I won't get it wrong I'm again. I'm just gonna take it. <laughs> That's fine. Um, now, you affectionately called it the um, the Oscars of the comic industry. Yeah. So that's a huge, it's that's a, a pretty, big deal. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah, so tell me kind of what it means to you as a shop, but also you personally and to well, have that it, nomination. It's, it's incredibly flattering because it's a, um, it's a customer nominated award. Mm -hmm. You have to be nominated by your customer. You okay. can't nominate yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you, look, once you, they bring it down to like the shortlist, five shops around the world get picked mm -hmm. for the shortlist and then you potentially can win. Um, so they draw the awards at these um, San Diego Comic Con oh, nice. every year, um, and it's not just the retailers of like best comic book series yeah. of 2017, 16, whatever year, best um, ongoing writer, that kind of thing. So there's all these actual comic book categories, and then there's this award, which is you know giving back to the the retailer side of mm -hmm. things. Um, from a shop perspective, it's huge. It's a huge honor for us to be nominated by our customers. It's a mm -hmm. huge honor to be listed among the best in the world. Like, you know, it means we seems like we're doing the right thing. Yeah, we're doing it seems like we're going the right, the right direction. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's just really gratifying as well that you know, we're, we're doing what needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, you've been open for 10 years. You've clearly been working hard and it's, it's like yeah, it's all coming it's together nice to, to pay off for that, for sure, yeah. 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 So is this your first nomination for the award? No, this is our third year running. Whoa, third in a row. I'm kind of hoping third time's a charm. Cool, yeah. Like, yeah just, and have you yeah, made the shortlist each year? We have made the shortlist. Wow. So top years. five? Uh, top five. Wow. So, top five yeah. comic shops in the world. Yeah, it could be, could be a lot worse. There's, yeah. That's a pretty good thing <laughs> so to hang out on anyway. Well. Yeah. yeah. I was reading about yeah. the, the this specific nomination. They were saying that they've kind of started to recognize how important the shops are yeah. as a go-between from the artists to the consumers. Absolutely. So yeah. it's it's nice to see it starting to That's it. Like, you pay always, dividends and you always start want to, to have notice. that kind of um, business feedback yeah. from us to the customer. Customers can give us the feedback and we order accordingly to mm -hmm. you know, what's selling well, what people are really into. Um, and from our own personal taste as well, it's like, you know, obviously you, you, everyone assumes that their taste is the best, but you want to see it reflected yeah. in what's selling as well and yeah. what, what's popular at the same Absolutely. time. So, you know, it's a good sign that we're mm -hmm. catering to everyone's needs. What do you think it is that kind of sets you aside from other stores in the area? What makes you unique and, and dynamic in the sense to get you to the point where you've got that nomination? I think, um, as we said, the, the layout of the shop is a big part of it. Um, people feel comfortable when they come in straight away. There's a lot of options to look around and browse at. Um, the main thing for us is customer service. Uh, we um, are, we're a big postal customer base as well. We post all over the country, um, all over the East Coast, Tasmania, Victoria. Really? So where comic shops are already existing, oh, nice. and people are choosing us as their people comic provider and stuff. That so that, that kind of is a sign to us yeah. that we're doing the right thing yeah. and you know we are a, I'm almost a one-stop shop for what people are chasing. Um, that's our big thing. We always we always see ourselves the main competitor for comic books purchasing is the internet. Mm -hmm. And if we can provide something the internet doesn't provide, which is the face to face interaction, that extra little bit of service going an extra mile kind of thing. Yeah. We pride ourselves on that because that's what I would want if I went into a comic shop as an as a customer. Mm -hmm. I want to give that same service back to people. Absolutely, that's perfect. Do you guys have an online shop? Do you work kind of uh, through mainly, Amazon? Mainly through our, um, our social media and that right. kind of thing, so through our Facebook pages. Um, so people just contact you and say, hey, I'm looking for this, and yeah. ship it over. and that's it. And we can do like, you know, PayPal, credit card, awesome. or phone, that kind of stuff. So that's yeah, great. we try and be flexible with that sort of cool. thing. You have a few like, very expensive collectible items. Yeah. Um, where do you kind of get that collectible stock from? Is it people who come in and try and make a yeah. barter trade? or We kind of don't buy directly from people. What yeah. we usually do is on consignment for the older stuff like that just because it protects us as a business mm -hmm. and it also means that we can have some cool older stuff as well as all the brand new comics as well. So we kind of do a consignment thing where we take you know, a certain percentage depending on the comic and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it just means we've got some cool weird old stuff like, you know, <laughs> Giant Size X-Men number one, we yeah. have we have Avengers number one a few months back, which sold it in a week. Um, and just it's the kind of stuff people don't see regularly mm -hmm. in person. So it's like if I can see something weird and different like this, which is really old and like we have the first time with Thanos ready for the Infinity Gauntlet movie. People yeah. are like, oh, oh wow. see this. Good timing for that. Exactly, <laughs> right? Um, and yeah, like Silver Surfer number one, we have a Wonder Woman number four from like 1941. 
um, which was in shocking condition, but just you don't see them anymore because mm. anything from that kind of World War II period was destroyed, destroyed. because it was either churned up in the you know, in the war mm. or it was re repurposed and recycled for the war. Again. So wow. so few of them exist in any kind of condition. It was just so awesome to it's see like a piece like of that. history. Exactly, yeah. man. Absolutely. We're gonna do uh, like a rapid fire lightning round about see, the shop. All right. Okay. What is the most expensive item in the shop? Right now, mm. I would probably say. Um, you can take it. I'll what's the thanks? I just walk out with it. <laughs> Yay! What's the most popular item? Something you can't keep on the shelf. Someone that something that someone always comes in and picks up. Uh, right? right now, it's either anything Batman. It's yeah. always a top seller. But really? um, Saga, the, the, the yeah, huge seller. Really? We literally can't keep it in the store. That's cool. And they're nominated for a bunch of the Eisner Awards every, as well. Every, like, every I've seen them in four or five different it's categories. Very, yeah, it's very by cool. far the most popular independent comic. It's more popular than Walking Dead. Wow, yeah. yeah. What's your personal favorite item of the show? My personal favorite is kind of, it's probably my favorite comic series, uh, Deadly Class. Really? It's a fantastic series by uh, Rick Remender and Wes Craig from Image. Um, it's just got this really cool 80s punk rock vibe to it. Um, I'm a big punk rock guy as well, um, obviously. Yeah, me too. I was, I was vibing off the music Absolutely. as we came in. Um, yeah, it's my favorite series. So, like, cool. anything we get that ties into that, I'm just going to I'm going to buy a copy myself and I'm mm. going to sell it to people as well. That's great. How many employees do you have? Uh, just the three of us. Uh, okay. So myself, Mike, and um, our junior employee, Jay. Are there any like Australian-born comic companies or maybe comics that take place in Australia? Yeah, yeah, there's a few. And um, do you try to promote those a little more heavily to kind of stimulate the, the local yeah, business? Yeah, there's a, there's a um, company called Gestalt. Mm -hmm. um, they operate out of Perth and Melbourne. Um, they, uh, I don't know if you've seen an animated series called The Deep. I don't think so. Uh, it's based out of Gold Coast. I think the series mm -hmm. is based in the Gold Coast. Okay. Um, and it's showing on like Nickelodeon and stuff like that now. Oh, nice. um, Tom Taylor from Melbourne. Mm -hmm. He's the current writer on the Justice comics that we mentioned right, before. Right, right, right. And the um, X-23 All New Wolverine stuff. Mm -hmm. He writes that as well. Oh, wow. um, he created that comic series, which is now picked up for a TV show. Um, it publishes a whole bunch of other books like Changing Ways and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely, when we when we have the stock of that, we try and promote locally produced content and stuff like that. Yeah. We get a lot of tourists been coming through, yeah, like me. ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people who want a little Memento, yeah. or something they can't find anywhere else. Oh, that's so cool. we can't provoke the, the okay. local produce stuff. Maybe I need to buy one of those before I look at that. Alright, that ends the quick lightning round, so you did well. Thank you. What are you currently reading? Like what's what's fresh for you? <laughs> 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 Deadly Class, obviously, like yep. I mentioned before, that's huge. Uh, which is the mm -hmm. Scott Snyder job. So yeah, we have a pull aside, I think she's yeah. going to walk out with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the current Marvel stuff that they're running, the um, X in Blue and Gold, mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying that. I'm really a big, big X Men guy. Mm -hmm. the previous series, Extraordinary X Men, I wasn't huge on. Mm -hmm. This stuff feels like it's kind of going back to the 80s sort of X Men vibe. Is that nice. real cool crossover kind of thing going yeah. with it? And I'm digging that yeah. a lot. In your opinion, what is the best? release of like the last year or so something brand new fresh that's like top of the list <laughs> um, I'd probably say Black Hammer yeah Black Hammer it's a series from Dark Horse mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Lemire it's basically a team of like 1940s pulp superheroes mm -hmm. battling some monster from beyond the beyond the grave kind of thing um, everything goes white they suddenly end up on the farm but literally they get it's like uh, one of those events where superheroes get killed off, mm -hmm. but they just end up on the farm. Oh, okay. And they have to live their life on the farm. In a small <laughs> town, every time they try and escape and go out of the town that they're in, yeah. there's like a barrier that stops them. So they're, actually, they're literally sent to the farm and they're trying That's to find out like, why they've been sent to the farm. It's, <laughs> it's weird, it's bizarre. It's yeah. a cool blend of like the weird, dirty pulp stuff and the kind of, yeah, the modern sort of messed up yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. yeah. You know what? That's pretty much everything. Okay. Unless there's anything you want to highlight or talk about a little bit more. No. Nothing I can think of. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming to business. Oh, and thank you man. so much for really having you guys. getting this information. Rock and roll, cool. man. Thank Last you one. so so much. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit those like and subscribe buttons and look for more of my nerdy content from around the world. I just left Comic Zone with a few issues of my own. Check out all of their information in the description of this video and go out and support your local comic book shop as well. Thank you all. See you guys soon.